But I have a pretty exciting announcement for anyone who's kind of big into this uh, AI art generation. Basically, the Dolly 3 API is now available. Before, you could kind of only use the Bing image creator to kind of play around with Dolly 3, but now we actually have an API which you can invoke to get the same type of images directly from the OpenAI API. So now the reason I'm super excited about this is because I have my icongeneratorai.com little side project I've been kind of working on. And right here we have a Dolly 2 image. So as you can tell, it kind of looks, you know, rudimentary, elementary. I don't know, it doesn't look that great. But what I did was I added an option to basically change the model that we send to OpenAI so that it can use Dolly 3 to generate um, images. So let's just kind of walk you through this change real quick and also talk about the pricing of the API and I'll talk about how to use it. So let's just go ahead and say like a happy panda. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put a happy panda. Let's just pick a color. Let's just do like uh, this green. How about that? I'm going to do the dolly too. Let's pick a pop art type of style. I'll go ahead and create like two of those. All right. So this is what the pop art examples look like. Now let's go ahead and upgrade this to a dolly too here. Now what I also did is when you click on this, it's going to change all the icon previews here so users have a better understanding of like what Dolly 2 is going to produce. Um, as you can see, the pop art here looks pretty good. Let's just go ahead and generate the icons. Now, the one thing I'll mention is with Dolly 3, you can only generate one image at a time. That's kind of a bummer. I'm guessing they're just trying to rate limit how many people are generating icons with their new model. And I'm assuming at some point they're going to bump that up to 10 like they have it with Dolly 2. But it's a one by one process. And as you can tell, we have a nice looking icon that popped up up here. I'll do it one more time so we have two to compare to. Um, some things I'll mention about the Dolly 3 API is that I've noticed it throw weird errors about the vulgar language. Like there's, Dolly has a built-in security check. So if you try to generate bad images, it'll actually throw a security check. I've seen it throw those errors with basic um, prompts for whatever reason. So that's something that I've been kind of, you know, having to work around. Secondly, the pricing's about double the price of Dolly 2. So I had to basically require users to consume two of their credits in order to use Dolly 3. But luckily yeah, my system's built so it's pretty easy to just like, like add, you know, how many credits are needed per thing. So let's go to my collection here and let's compare. So the, with the exact same prompt with Dolly 2, we have these little um, pandas here. And over here, this is the Dolly 3. So obviously a huge improvement in the quality. Like this just looks, this looks cool. Like if you just go ahead and, um, open this in a new tab. Like, you know, that's really detailed, it looks nice. This one, not so much. So that's the update. And you can see here, I have all these other icons with the angry chicken previews that I've been doing. And I'm just excited about this. I think this is really gonna make um, my application just be a little bit more polished and get it more outputs. All right, so going to the pricing model, let's look at what uh, Dolly 3 charges. So for standard images that are um, 1024 by 1024, it's about four cents per image. Compared to Dolly 2, it was 20 cents per image. So it's about double the price. Now they do also have the ability to do an HD quality, which is about four times the price of Dolly 2. I haven't added that to my application. Um, I've been seeing some really good results with standard. And I don't know if paying four times the price is worth it for HD, but maybe that's an option I can add in like a little checkbox. Um, that people can opt into and that will just consume for their credits. Uh, another change about Dolly 3 is that they do support a higher, different type of resolution. So before you have to have like square resolutions for all your images you generate. And now they provide an actual like HD 1080p kind of format. So this could potentially be used for like a top banner of a website. If you wanted to generate content for, I don't know, a YouTube thumbnail, I think this is moving us in a great direction where you can make content that has a good aspect ratio. You don't have to do AI generative fill around those edges. It's just gonna give you that stuff out of the box. All right, so how to use it. Let's go to the API. Um, it doesn't really change too much. The only change is that now when you do create image, this was the URL that we used to do before, um, and you'd have to pass it um, some data. And the main change is that now you can provide a model here. So if you were to put dolly-e-3, that uses a new version of Dolly. If you don't provide this, it's going to default to Dolly 2. And also you can just do a hyphen 2 here if you want to use the old uh, model. Now with Dolly 3, there are some new things in caveats, right? The first caveat is you can only do n equals 1 when you're using Dolly 3. Uh, quality, you have the option to provide a quality property. You can put HD if you want to, which I kind of mentioned before. Um, size, you have a little bit of different size options for Dolly 3. And then for style, this is something I haven't seen. It's kind of new. 
you can choose for Dolly 3 images, when you do style, you can choose vivid or you can choose natural. Now vivid is the default and it just makes the icons, you know, pop a little bit more. Um, natural is supposed to be more natural. I don't know, I haven't really played around with this, so maybe I'll also play around with that and see if I can incorporate it into my um, application. So that's kind of how you do the create images. Now one caveat about image uh, creation with Dolly 3, or I guess I should say image variation, is that you can't do it with Dolly 3. Um, right now it says only Dolly 2 is supported at this time. So that kind of forced me to add a bunch of code to my um, project to say if we're Dolly 3, I went ahead and just disabled this button because you cannot do variants with Dolly uh, 3. But for other uh, the other model, Dolly 2, I could still make variants here. All right, the last thing I want to show is how much revenue has this application made over the past month? I'm getting about $1,000 in gross volume every month. Um, the month previous to October was about 1250 So it is going down. It's trending down a little bit. I also haven't been making that many YouTube videos about it. Um, and also when Dolly 3 Bing came out, I'm assuming people are just using that directly since it's free. You can kind of generate app icons there. I will say I'm kind of surprised that it's making this much money every month because there are free ways to basically do the same thing. The one thing that this uh, my application provides is that I do the prompt generation under the hood for you. So you don't have to think about different artists and um, stylistic approaches. You can just click on one of these. And behind the scenes, I generate a prompt. I find someone who's good at cartoonish art, and I also add in those artists to the prompt so that the AI can generate um, good outputs. That's really the only main thing behind the scenes, like the secret sauce of why this thing would be added value over just using Bing directly, is that you don't have to spend time doing the um, the prompt engineering, I guess. But overall, my app has been like low maintenance. I haven't had to touch it at all in any way. So I just talked about gross volume. I mean, obviously Stripe takes a cut out of everything I sell. And then on top of the 987 that is left over from the Stripe cutting, um, I have to pay back OpenAI for all the icons that are gener being generated. So overall, like the net profit for this application, minus hosting, minus OpenAI, is around like 400 to 500 a month. So this, you know, the application is not making too much money, but I am still happy that it is making some income. This has been like the first real side project that I've worked on that's generated some type of income. Um, so I'm happy about that. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Again, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And like always, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join if you want to find a place to kind of hang out and talk to uh, other developers. Have a good day and happy coding.